As we all know, Angular has its own way to handle change detection by using ng-zone at its core. The compiler takes care of everything and as a developer, we don't have to care about what's running behind the scene. Or is it? Well, for starters, ng-zone just works. So how does ng-zone work? ng-zone is just a wrapper around a zone.js API. Zone.js tracks and intercepts async operations like set timeout, set interval, exit chores, and DOM events, such as mouse clicks, key app, submit, etc. So when an asynchronous operation happens, Angular triggers change detection. The best use case scenario is you might run a couple of asynchronous operations like calling an API service that don't require to show results in the UI or render the, the results in the UI. Okay, so while we are building an application, you know, we will be just going, taking this for granted and then using the async uh, operations or calling an API, or it might be just a put call, which uh, might not need an async, which might not need a change detection. So I'm going to call an API and see if that triggers change detection. And so our API, uh, we have defined a method called do something. And it is in a component called, uh, we are calling it from a component using a button click. It's over here. And we are using do something. Let me zoom that screen a bit. Okay, so this might look fairly visible. We need to focus only on the console part. So when you click on the do something, uh, the do something goes uh, over and call the data service for get post API. Get post API is just an observable that returns uh, data from the JSON placeholder type code. Let's assume that this method need to just post the information to the API service, but we don't want to do anything to the UI. Okay, so in this case, you need to watch the do check um, cycle so we can understand like what really goes on. So do check is basically whatever that's uh, whenever the change detection kicks in, you know, do check will trigger. So we can keep a count of the number of uh, change detection that has happened. Okay, so when we do something, do check count goes to two. And then, I mean, there are like a few other things that has happened and then the count goes to two. We got the data arrived and then the do check increments to three. So that means that um, there is no use for this uh, subscribe. I mean, there is no use for the response yet. The change detection is triggered, which we really don't need that at this at this moment. So when you imagine a very large application, this is really a pain and puts stress on the UI rendering. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. When do we need uh, uh, the changes in the UI and when we don't need? Okay, so um, operations like this are a bit costly when you're working on a very large uh, application that has uh, hundreds of components involved in it. Okay, so to make things easier, Angular comes up uh, with their very own implementation called ng-zone. And using the ng-zone, we can declare it as a private, as a field in a class, and we are just pulled in ng-zone here. And what we can do is, in this method, we can just use ng -zone dot run outside angular so the run outside angular is basically accepts a function and arguments function as an argument so we are going to open up a function an anonymous function and then execute this block of code inside the run outside angular now immediately what this will do is it will uh, it will execute uh, in the normal way so you won't see any major changes as such, but except this run, run outside Angular will take your, uh, uh, will stop doing the change detection. So we'll take, will zone you out of the Angular and it executes the, uh, this block. So when you do something, so we have do check zero and one. And when you do something, we got the data arrived and we got do check to two and we don't have the do check to three, right? So that because we are not running inside the angular zone, we are running outside the angular zone. And we don't that specifically means that we don't want uh, the operations, whatever that's happening here, uh, to trigger the change detection event, you can disable this whole ng zone thing. Okay, that's fairly simple. But by disabling means you are disabling the 
the sugar coated thing for an angular the main core of an angular because change reduction and zone js works uh, closer together and uh, it's essentially like you're taking away things from the angular's uh, framework but we can just test it out so all you need to do is come to the bootstrapping of angular application in in any application that when you bootstrap you will get this main ts file in main ts you will have the bootstrap module over here where you will be setting the entry point of your application which is the entry point entry module of your application and in here all you need to do is fasten extra parameter called ng zone and no op so this will get rid of all your ng zones in your angular application if you do something nothing has happened do check happens only once it behaves more or less like a static web application so that is pretty much about ng zone and run outside angular um, i hope you find this video interesting if so please subscribe to my channel and and please share with your friends as well thank you